So a while ago, I uploaded a video called how to create a grappling hook in 60 seconds, and it was frankly hard to look because the grappling hook sucks ass, so I've took upon myself the important mission of upgrading it. So now it can do awesome things like actually launch to the point in two different ways because one was not enough. You can always play around with the settings to get the perfect grappling hook for you, and this includes the animation of the rope which actually exists this time. So. It sounds like I'm trying to sell you something, but this is actually open source, so everyone can contribute and make the perfect grappling hook perfecter. Oh, and this is totally gonna be more than one minute. Create a new 2D sprite. In this case, it will be a ball that I'm going to name player. Add a rigid body 2D component and freeze rotation on the z-axis. Add a spring joint 2D, check enable collision and change the damping ratio to 1. Then add a circle collider. Inside it, create an empty game object called gun pivot. This game object will be the parent of the grappling gun. To the grappling gun, add a sprite renderer, change its color and add a box collider. Inside it, create another empty game object called fire point and inside that one, create a game object called rope that will have line renderer component. Change the size of the line, set corner vertices to 1 and end cap vertices to 10. Then, go ahead and create a new unlit particle material and assign it to the line renderer material slot. Now create a script for the rope called Tutorial Grappling Rope and another script for the grappling gun itself called Tutorial Grappling Gun. Go to the script below and copy and paste the code to the script you just created. And don't be angry, I'll explain the code, but write it with me is just a waste of time. Also, this is good if you just want to use it immediately in your projects. Now add some objects and make sure that the objects you want to grapple to have a collider and are in the right layer. Okay, so the next section is about the code itself, but for those of you who just wants to slap the grappling gun into your game, copy and paste the scripts and this is how you should use them. I'll start with the rope script. So you can pretty much control any property of the rope with the script. The precision is the amount of points that will be connected to create a rope. From my testing, anything above 40 looks fine. Straight and line speed is the speed of changing the line from a wavy kind of line to a straight line. The animation curve of the rope is what is the rope gonna look like after it's been shotted. The animation will start at point 0 with a value of 0 and end in point 1 with a value of 0, while the highest and lowest values of the curve should stay between 1 and minus 1. Start wave size controls the size of the wave. Rope progression is super important since without it there will be no animation. This animation controls the movement of the rope. It represents the lerp from point A to point B. The start point of the animation should also start at 0 and end at 1. This time, the value of the last point should be at value 1 and the start point should be at value 0. Progression speed is the speed of this lerp. Okay, so rope settings should be pretty clear. Even if you didn't fully understand, you can just play around with them to figure them out. Now, let's take a look at the settings of the grappling gun itself. First of all, we need a reference to the rope. In our layer settings, we can choose whether we want to only grapple to a specific layer or to grapple to any layer. We need a reference to the camera for the calculations in the script. A few transforms references are needed. A reference to the object who has the rigid body and spring joint attached. A reference to the gun pivot, so we can rotate the gun. And one for the fire point, so we know from where to shoot. You can control the rotation of the gun. It can either move over time. If so, you can specify the speed. If you want it to always look at the cursor, you can disable it. You can either have a maximum distance or not. If you do enable it, it is shown with the gizmos and you can change the maximum distance in the inspector. If you decide you want to launch to the point, you can tick this box. You can choose two ways of launching to the point. Either use transform launch, which overrides all physics, or use physics to launch to the point with the spring joint. You can also control the speed of the launch. If you don't check launch to point, you can either auto configure distance, which will have the result of my last tutorial. If you don't check auto configure distance, you can choose the distance that you want from the grapple point and the frequency. This part is for those of you who really want to understand how it works. I'm not going to explain each and every line and the animation is going to be pretty complicated, so keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to start with the script of the rope. Whenever the script is enabled, we set some parameters. We want to set move time to zero and start counting time from the moment the script is activated. We're gonna set the amount of points in our line renderer to precision. Wave size is the wave size we're actually going to modify. We're just setting the usable wave size variable to the start wave size. We still don't wanna make the line straight, so we set it to false. Line points to fire points sets all of the points to the fire point. Then we enable the line renderer. We check if we want to make the line straight. If not, we want to check if the last point of the line renderer has reached the grapple point using this line of code. And if it is, that means that we should start making the line straight. Else, we would like to call the draw waves function. The explanation of this draw row waves function is by far the most complicated. I'll try to explain it, so just stay with me. The for loop is iterating through every point. The delta variable determines what part of the distance from fire point to grapple point the point should pass. 
sounds complicated, but it's actually really not. It means that if you have 3 points, the first point would be at 5 point position, since it's 0 divided by 2. The second point would be at half of this distance, because it's 1 divided by 2. And the third point would be at grapple point, since it's 2 divided by 2, which makes it pass the whole distance. The offset is what tells the point at what place they should be. It works like that. We calculate the distance between grapple point and fire point, and we find its perpendicular vector, and then we normalize it since we want only its direction. We evaluate the wanted height of the point using the delta variable since we can treat the animation curve like it has a percentage. So if we have 100 points and we want to offset the 10th point, its height will be equal to the height of where we passed in the curve animation 10% of the animation. We then multiply that by the wave size we want. I'm trying to explain that well, but if you are new to all these sort of words I've just thrown at you, I really recommend you to learn a bit more about animation curves and vector calculations. Then, Go back to this video and everything will be more clear. Target position is the position we want to have at the end. At the end we want our point to be at a certain distance, some percentage, delta, from start point. Then we add our offset. Current position is the actual lerp function that moves the point from fire point to target position. Here we use move time to evaluate the progression of the rope. Note that if curve in progression curve is constant, there will be no animation. I suggest you to make the progression curve go from the value of 0 at start to the value of 1 at the end. We then multiply the value of progression curve with progression speed. Then the final thing to do is to set the position of the right point at the right spot. After the rope is connected to grapple point, we want to make the line straight. So we'll gradually decrease the size of the waves while it's still above 0. When it's not, the line is actually straight, which means that all of the points we've created for making the waves serves now no purpose, so performance-wise we should get rid of them. If the amount of points is not 2, we make it 2, and set the last point of the line renderer to grapple point and the first one to fire point. And that pretty much concludes all the script for the grappling rope. Now for the grappling gun. When the game starts, we want to disable both grapple rope and spring joint 2D. If we are not pressing anything at all, the gun will rotate to our mouse position. The rotate gun function works something like this. We are calculating the distance vector so that we could do some trigonometry and find with how much angle to rotate, and we check if we have selected rotate over time. We have another boolean called LR rotation over time. We'll see why it's there in a few minutes. If we want to rotate over time, we are looping between current rotation and the rotation we want. We get the rotation we want with the angle axis command. If rotate over time is not selected, the gun will look at the cursor all the time. We have three main states when grappling. When we first click, we want to check if we should grapple to the grappling point. We do that by recasting from the position in the direction of the distance vector, and that's why we are normalizing it. If we do hit something, we check if we want a specific layer or grapple to all layers. If we hit something in the right layer, we check if it is inside the grappable radius or if we just don't want a radius. If we pass all of those, we set the grappling point to the hit point. Grappling point is just the vector 3 variable that represents the position of that hit point. We set the grapple distance vector variable to using the grappling rope script and we enable the rope. The grappling itself is being activated whenever the rope reaches its destination. When this happens, we activate the most important function in the script, which is the grapple function. Using it, we determine what kind of flange we want. There is only one occasion that we would like to auto-configure distance. So we disable it at the start, worst case scenario, we we'll enable it at the end. If we are not auto-configuring the distance and are not launching to the point, we'll just set the distance that we want and the frequency of the rope. Then, we check if we don't want to launch to the point, and if we should auto-configure distance. If we do want, we set frequency to 0 and set auto-configure distance to true. Either way, we'll set the connected anchor to grapple point and enable the spring joint. If we do want to launch to the point, we check what kind of launch is it. If it is physics launch, we'll set the connected anchor to grapple point, then we'll calculate the distance vector of the fire point and the player's position. We'll set the distance of the spring joint to the magnitude of this vector, so the player will get to the point where the fire point reaches the grapple point. Then we'll set the frequency to launch speed and enable the spring joint. If we chose transform launch, we set gravity scale to 0 and set our velocity to 0. The actual launch will be calculated in the update method. The second stage is when we are holding the mouse button. We check if the rope is enabled. If it is, we want to rotate grapple point immediately, even if we select the rotate over time. Then, we check if we have launch to point enabled and if we are grappling. Is grappling is variable that turns true when we start to grapple, or when the rope reaches grapple point. Then, we check if the launch type is transform launch. This could probably be much cleaner, in a separate function, but no way I'm re-editing the video. 
If this is the launch type, we calculate the distance of the fire point from the center of the gun holder. Then we launch the player towards grapple point, but we'll consider the distance of fire point from the position of the player. We want the player to move towards grapple point until fire point and grapple point are in the same place. Then we check if the player is no longer pressing the button. If he isn't, we disable grapple rope and spring joint and set the gravity scale to 1 if the launch type was transform launch. There are a lot of ways I could improve how I explain the code I wrote, and a lot of ways that the code could be cleaned out. I'm counting on you, the smart people who are watching this video, to make it way better. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like and comment what you'd like to see next. I just wanted to thank you everyone who subscribed to the channel, I have no idea how I got to 100 subs, and I just wanted you all to know that I really appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, and don't forget to download my game, <laughs> link in the description below. Yeah, this is like a whole scam to get you guys to download my game. No, but really, you know, you should you should really check it out.